Hello, I'm Ellis and I'm a guitarist. Ooh, like that's a fucking surprise. Can I say that that early in a video? I might have to delete that. Anyways, I have played guitar for quite a long time. I do have a master's degree. Not that that's really relevant, but I'm just saying I might chime in on some things he says. I've not seen this. So I'm just saying, if you're like, why is this dude even pretending he knows anything? Because I might know something. I mean, maybe I don't know anything, but it also might make for a better video. Oh yeah, no, I don't play any polyphia because I suck at guitar and I'm lying about everything. That's not true, that's not true. That, that actually was a lie. I'm Tim Henson and I'm here today to answer your questions from Twitter. This is Guitar Support. Uh, uh, uh. Mm. Queen Tay asks, why are bar chords so hard? For a lot of beginners, bar chords are difficult because you have to kind of place one finger across the entire fretboard. For some, like that's just a weird movement. And really, like you're kind of hitting it on the side of your finger versus like yes, the, sir. the pad. So if you can hit and play all of those notes, cleanly, and then you'll be able to get a nice bar chord. I do have something for that, which is, he's completely 100% correct. But another reason is when people are playing with their index finger and they're squeezing so hard to make the strings ring, ring out uh, with their other digits, they're squeezing so hard with their index finger, so much pressure is on their index, that it becomes really hard to be coordinated with the other fingers and also have pressure. So I think one of the things beginner bar chord people have a problem with is they actually squeeze way too hard. So here's something you can steal from me in case you want to, is have a student or anyone or yourself place their finger across a span of frets, but don't squeeze. Just lay your finger across it. And then gradually squeeze. And squeeze until music comes out. And then when it comes out, that's the least amount of force you need to make it ring out. You don't have to squeeze all day. You're over squeezing. Premier Guitar asks, what's a riff that sounds easy but is actually hard to play? John Mayer's Neon. Oh, doesn't sound that difficult. And then correct. you watch him play it, it's just got his thumb stretched all the way up here, and it's incredible. So he frets the root of the chords with his thumb and then plays like just regular chords that you would normally do. Yes. Like all the way up there. So he, it's, just, it's just truly a difficult thing to play. I, I think what he's not saying is, of course, Stevie Ray Vaughan and Hendrix all use thumb position chords, which also John Mayer did from Hendrix, like we all do from Hendrix and Stevie Ray. Uh, but usually our thumb is in line with where the index finger would typically be. But John's fucking hands are big, and so he actually like will be off like a fret or two. So you're actually stretching while playing the root of the chord with the thumb. I like this. I bet you hate it. Kind of can't care. You just got to keep going. Especially if you do not have large hands. Pretty a difficult Backed thing to play. Five seconds, I think. Especially if you do not have large hands. From Pedro C. Gallardo. What the f*** are boomer bends? Boomer Probably bends is a term coined by Rick Beato and I. It describes a very specific guitar bending lick commonly used in music from the 60s and 70s, the age of the baby boomer. <laughs> The more twang you give it, and the more like old guy you make it sound, the more boomery it is, I suppose. But we didn't make that term in an offensive way. It was more so just like it starts with a B, and Ben starts with a B. So it's, it became a catchy phrase in that way. And I think a lot of uh, baby boobers got upset at that term, but that's all right because, you know, it's just a way to describe a sound. Play yep. guitar underscore bass asks, what makes a great guitar solo? For me, Ooh. how memorable the solo is and if you can sing the solo. For example, I think the guitar solo from Bohemian Rhapsody is oh, shit. one of the best guitar solos of all time. <laughs> if you can sing with it, it's 
more memorable than just a bunch of notes scattered. Shown Baby asks, can someone send me a good guitar lesson vid on finger tapping? And we can go over finger tapping right now. It's one of the easier, flashier techniques, which is fun because it doesn't take a lot of effort starting on the fifth fret and the eighth fret of the B string. And then 12 with your right the hand. The Van Halen and lick. The, the way that lick. you fret these notes, you need to be in the middle of the fret in order to get a clean note. Once you can do that, then you just speed it up. So just start with that sequence. But yeah, that's tapping. Sage of Quay asks, upgrade versus upscale. Is upgrading a cheap guitar worth it or are expensive guitars just a scam? I personally do not think that expensive guitars are a scam. I think after a certain price point, that's about as good as the guitar is going to get. I would say, I'm just curious. I'm only saying this to you, not because I think I'm fucking a know-it-all, but I'm just always curious if someone's gonna give an answer what my answer would be. I, th I think usually that number is around 2,000, yeah, 1,500, 2,000. Above that, a lot of times it's aesthetic things, you know? That's just my argument. I'm not talking about rare guitars. I'm just talking like a $5,000 Fender versus a 2,000 versus an 800 or an Ibanez or whatever. I would tip it, for me, I'm gonna say that cutoff is like 2,000. Oh, but classical guitars. Classical guitars, I would say that number is probably more around 5,000. Because when you're dealing with a classical instrument, viola, violin, cello, bass, which by the way, 5,000 would be the bottom of their shit. Uh, that wouldn't even be considered a nice instrument for, for an orchestral string. But you're, you're depending on the body of the instrument to generate so much sound that you're not going to fix with the EQ and amps. You know, it's, it's going to be mainly the instrument that you pay tremendously more money for an instrument that just naturally sounds better. But with an electric guitar where you're running it through cables and a pedal board and an amp, and if you're playing live, maybe it's going through a PA system and a sound engineer, I think, I, I would say like 2000. I don't know if he's gonna give a price point. I'm just curious. You can find really, really great guitars with what I call mojo. Those instruments just have a great feeling. You can find those for under five hundred dollars. Thousand to fifteen hundred dollar mark is where you're going to have like a, a fairly like intermediate. It's going to be a good guitar. And then after two thousand dollars and up is kind of where you're going to find like really well crafted guitars, and they're intonated better. So, for example, intonation is hitting the harmonic of the twelfth fret, and then hitting the twelfth fret and how well those match together is how well intonated that guitar is. For example, this guitar. That's fucking perfect. It's pretty well intonated. If we were to pick up, if this we were to pick up a cheaper guitar and see how well this one is intonated. Well, you can tell that it's not the best intonated, but it's not Terrible. Starcaster. You're going to be performing in front of a, a crowd and you want a stable workhorse, probably want to spend a little bit more on your guitar. Blues Web Radio asks, what does the tone knob actually do? The tone knob is a high cut filter, so when you turn it down, it's going to cut a lot of the high frequencies. So for example, I'm going to play a riff with the tone knob all the way up. Tone knob all the way down. So you can kind of hear the difference between those. Just between me and you, I'm really astonished on whatever model Ibanez he's playing that when he's got the tone knob all the way up, how closely it's actually mimicking a Stratocaster sound. Which, when I was first learning stuff, late 90s, mid 90s, early 2000s, Ibanez's did not sound like strats. They just didn't. I think it's pretty fucking awesome. And doing it with humbuckers. Just just from me to you. I just think it's fucking awesome. Technology comes a long way. So you can kind of hear the difference between those. When I bring it all the way up. 
you get the full range of frequencies. Yes, FDHL IHN asks, how the f are you sweep picking? My left hand ain't that fast. So the first thing that you're gonna wanna do when sweep picking is practice very, very slow. Both hands need to be perfectly in sync. To go into that motion, you're gonna wanna think of the pick falling in a sweeping motion and falling back up in a sweeping motion. So once you practice that enough, you can bring that up to speed and do. Yay! And then sweep picking. That's fucking Simon awesome. Simon B Radio DJ asks, right? So can the guitar players out there explain different tunings for guitars? I can never seem to get my head around it all. So there's probably a million different tunings out there. The most common one that you're going to see is E standard, and that is just E A D G B E. That's a great one to start with because your scales are going to be linear. The next most common one is probably going to be E flat standard. And that one you'll see a lot in older rock music. Tune the guitar down just by one half step so that the singer wouldn't have to belt as hard. It just gives it a little bit of a darker sound when it's down tuned. The next most common one is drop D or any dropped tuning where your low string is going to go down a whole step. Nice thing about that is that you're able to do power chords, which is the root, the fifth, and the octave. You'll be able to play those with just one finger. Sorry, I was just I'm just stuck on him saying that the the E flat tuning was A flat tuning. Sorry, I'm stuck in my head. Yes, everything he's saying is correct. I guess it's just the nomenclature, the jargon, the lexicon of what we're speaking about seems I've in my I've been playing for like, I don't know, man, 20 god, how fuck old am I now? 20 I've been playing for 26 years. I have never once heard anyone say I'm playing an A flat standard. But I'm learning something new. So the next time, if, if someone ever says that to me, I'll know what they're, they're talking about. It was E and E flat. We're referring to the lowest pitch on the guitar. Why is it E standard? Because the lowest note's E. So I would assume if you detune a half step, it's E flat standard. I still love them. I'm just like, it's weird, like, whatever. And then you'll find open tunings, which are commonly used in like math rock and emo music. You can kind of play easy chord shapes, but then have really complex sounding chords. Feller NJ asks, you'll like pinch harmonics. I fucking love pinch harmonics. <laughs> They're awesome. Uh, if you want to learn how to do a pinch harmonic, first up, you're gonna switch your pickup selection all the way to the bridge pickup. Yes, And sir. with your right hand. You basically take the pick and you're going to hit the string twice. Once with the pick, once with your thumb for one swift action. Uh, I've never heard it, I've never heard anyone say that. That's that's awesome. I'm I'm gonna use that. Um, his is probably better than than my explanation. I think of it as one motion, where you do sh you strike the string twice in one motion. So you're you got your pick and your hand, right? And then you're pushing against the string. The string is against the pick. As the string releases from the pick, it comes into contact with your thumb. So you do get two contact points on the string, but it's one motion that gives two contact points. And I don't have an electric plugged in, but we can pretend, right? I don't know, can the mic pick up? But it's one motion that causes two contact points. But I should maybe introduce the idea of thinking about it as being two 
What do you say? Two instances of hitting the string? Mm. Mm. So yeah, intraharmonic. Nathan Relax says, I have no idea what makes a good guitar tone and it annoys me. It has everything to do with taste and using your ears. Because I remember when I was 10 years old, I could not hear what the bass guitar was doing. Like, I just couldn't distinguish it between the guitar and the bass guitar. And then, like, just a year later, I was like, okay, I can clearly hear that now, and I don't know what was wrong with me. Now I've been on this earth long enough to understand what a good mix is and why it's a good mix. Listening to a lot of music and comparing mixes and comparing guitar tones will help you on your journey to crafting a good guitar tone. Pneumonia27 asks, do I need to know music theory in order to- I'm so excited about this answer. As a guy who started off not knowing any music theory, then learned a decent amount, and then way later on went to college for it and was formally trained in classical theory, not like neo-fusion soul theory, which is like, it's really just a different application of the same concepts. I'm very excited to hear what his, his uh, answer is. I would say, no, you definitely do not know, you don't need to know music theory to write songs at all. You do not. It's just another way of being able to come up with ideas, or if you get stuck, you can use some tools in your toolbox to do something else. But you def to me, you definitely do not need to know theory uh, to write songs. Not at all. Let's see what his answer is. To write songs. I think a lot of the best songwriters of all time probably didn't know any music theory. I myself do not know a good amount of music theory and if you have any melody in your head and you write it down you're writing music right there so now you do not need to know yes, sir. at all to write songs okay so this is getting stretched out i think the best thing to do is to cut this in half uh i mean i'm not making a 30 set whatever you don't even you don't need to know my justifications i mean maybe you're interested but i'm just it's like a class. I feel like I'm watching a class. I mean, I'm having fun, but it's almost like when you're sitting in a lecture hall for a certain amount of time or uh, anywhere where you're forced to sit for a long time. I'm just not like a great fan of that. And I'm sitting for a long time, which means, well, it doesn't mean that you're sitting. You could be walking or traveling wherever you are, but I am sitting. And so for me, I got to like not, I got to get up. I might post this video first and see how you feel about it and then do the second. But shit, I might just film the second. I mean, cause I really, I really have had a great time watching Tim. I don't know, I don't know. But you're not even gonna know what I'm saying unless you made it to the end of the video. So, if you are here at the very end, you're fucking amazing. Uh, the other people were also probably decently amazing but like statistically right statistically 75 percent of them 80 percent have left the room see you see how stupid i'm being i have to get off the camera at least for this video